Welcome to the Find My Catalyst podcast. We all have problems we're looking to solve, and we know that there are solutions out there, but we struggle with this. How do we find the solution? Where does that nudge come from to help us take the next step, start solving tough problems? This podcast is designed to help you find your catalyst and take that next step. I am Mike Simmons. I am the founder of Catalyst Sale. Jody is with me today in one of those special co host type episodes where he's going to interview me and we're going to have a conversation. I know it's been a while. The reason Jody is back is we are at episode 300, episode 300, which provides a pretty cool opportunity to do a bit of a reset here, reset some expectations around what we're doing with the podcast as things go forward, share some lessons learned, and talk about what's next. Jody, how are you doing? I am great, Mike. But I'll tell you this, what you said leading up to this shows us where we've come with the podcast, because there was a time where I would say, I'm your host, Jody Mayberry. And now you basically said, well, he's an occasional guest host. That's how far the show has come in 300 episodes. I said guest too. I didn't say host. Oh, goodness. That's even down one more notch. It it is. it, It just shows you how our relationship has evolved over time. Yes, it has. Well, I'm so proud, Mike. 300 episodes. I, I still remember the park I was at in Squim, Washington, when we had our first phone call, when you had emailed me, told me you were interested in a podcast. And when you called, I happened to be at a park. And I remember that conversation, which led us to the show, which led us now to celebrating you in 300 episodes. There we go. And it's celebrating everybody because we've gone through some pretty interesting transition over the, over the course of the last couple of years. And we launched this we first started our converse, we first started the planning for the podcast and recording in March of 2016. The podcast officially launched in October of 2016. And here we are in June of 2022. And we there's been a there's been a lot of stuff that's happened since then. And here we are. There are more podcasts than ever. That's pretty obvious, but still the average show lasts seven to 10 episodes. So I'm, I'm curious, Mike, why do you think you have lasted 300 when most shows only make it as far as 10? A lot of people will describe me as tenacious. And I think that's, I think that's, a, big, that's a big one. It's uh, tenacious, just kind of sticking to something and wanting to continue to keep it, keep it moving forward. And, and you know, we went through some ups and downs relative to number of episodes going out for a period of time. Actually saw a pretty good drop off in uh, listenership as we went through that back in 2021. We're back on the upswing. So it's there's a tenacity associated with it. There's a commitment to the consistency, commitment to con- you know, delivering content in a consistent manner. And I think there's, I shouldn't say I think, I know I firmly believe that this show makes an impact for the people who come across it, for the specific thing that they're working on, that catalyst that they're working on. And we went from calling it the Catalyst Sale Podcast to Find My Catalyst. And that's what my objective is here, is to help people find their catalyst so they can start taking that next step and do those tough things that they've been avoiding. So that drive to continue to produce and continue to deliver is what does it. The other thing that's been really interesting is nowadays we have so many more guests on. Originally it was Mike and I with you as the host. And then it turned into you and me. And then it turned into, well, I mean, there were some episodes where you and I would be on with a guest. But then, you know, most recently it's me with a guest. And then periodically you and I come together. And actually, I think or a couple of Weeks past it, but if you if you missed this a couple of weeks ago, I went live with an episode where I just answered some direct off the cuff listener questions that come up. So kind of an impromptu, unedited test kind of episode, and that I believe was episode two ninety six and went live in or earlier in June. So anyhow, that is uh, that's kind of been the evolution of things. One of the neat things to have seen happen is. As Mike has gone through changes personally and in business and career, the show has has stayed here. So it, when it was Mike and Mike, then it was just Mike, the show stayed. When Mike ended up making a different career choice, the show stayed. Now Mike is focused on Catalyst Sale again, and the show has stayed. 
What has it been about the show, Mike, that has still benefited you or kept you with it, even when all those other changes were happening? I think it's, it, again, it's important to be consistent in the way that you're getting information out there. Plus, I enjoy it. Like, I really enjoy having conversations with interesting people who are doing interesting things, who are solving interesting problems, who have a different perspective on the way that they go about doing things. And what it tends to happen is you find that there are some common themes around each of these different perspectives. So I just, I enjoy talking with people and it provides a really good opportunity to, to do that. Now that you've done this many episodes, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned? It could be from guests, it could be about yourself, it could be about podcasts, but what have you learned over 300 episodes? I think the big one is learning to be a better listener and understanding the importance of pausing in communication, taking the time to to really absorb the information that's being shared and do that in a way where you're not listening to respond, but listening to understand. And I still will struggle with it from time to time because there's sometimes things that happen. And right now our our internet connection is a little bit soft. So Jody and I are not on video. Usually I would see his nonverbal and I could play off of the nonverbal. He could play off of my nonverbal. We'd know when to engage in conversation. I think when you do that with others, you start to really just use a Camille Clemens quote, be where your feet are relative to communication. You become a much better listener, a much better communicator. And I think through that arc, at least I hope, I've gotten a bit better at the types of questions that I ask that go a bit deeper into the story or the discussion than I might have had when we first started this. I know this isn't you asking me questions about the 300th episode, but I'm going to answer the one I just asked you because you talked about how you've gotten better at asking questions. And as someone that now listens to the show every week instead of someone who is on the show every week, that is one thing I have noticed about Mike is the progression in how he asks questions and how much better he's gotten at it. Mike, that's been such a treat for me, knowing where we started and seeing where you are now. You've become such a good interviewer where your questions are entertaining, they're informative, and it really leads to a good conversation. Where along the line do you feel like that happened? Or, or when did you notice that you had gotten better at this? I don't know. I don't know that. I, I don't know. I think it's, it's a good question. I just, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know that there are, I, I think another, so a lesson learned in all of this, I wish I would have listened to more of the episodes in the middle period when we transitioned and Jen started listening to episodes to create show notes. I stopped listening and I think things got a little bit off track. And I realized that in some instances, I got a little bit wordy and I still will do that from time to time. I'll get a little bit wordy or a little bit excited about the building up toward a given a given question. So I would imagine that's probably happened in the last 18 months or so, maybe 12 to 18 months, as I've started listening to more of the content to help accelerate the way that we push things out into production. And Jen has some other things that she's working on. So I would say probably in the last 12 to 18 months, maybe a little bit longer than that, but I don't know. What, what, when did you notice? I would say it's definitely within the last year and especially within the last few months, you've done really well. And you touched on one of the things, I, I'm glad you did, so it doesn't seem like I'm calling you out for something. But it used to be you would, instead of just asking a question, you would really build up to the question. Instead of just saying, how's your day? You would talk about the day and then ask, how was your day? And I think now that you've, you're not as wordy leading up to questions, it, it leads to better interaction from you. And it really has, your, your interviews have, not that you were ever bad, but you've just gotten good. And it's, I really enjoy the episodes. Well, it's good. I because I sometimes like even on some of the most recent ones that we've had on, because we've had some really good, good folks on and really interesting conversations. I think it'll be interesting to get your feedback on am I starting to get a little bit more wordy on the front end? Because I'm doing more to continue to shift the podcast into more of a discussion. And I'm also starting to think 
about how can we repurpose a lot of the content to how do we make it more accessible to folks that they don't need to listen to 45 minutes of me and a guest or 48 minutes of me and a guest or whatever the whatever the timeline goes through so it'd be interesting to hear from those who are listening you the listener what do you appreciate what have what have you seen change over 300 episodes what would you like to see more of as we go forward and where can i improve so those are the three big questions what have you seen change what would you like to see more of and where can i improve and be nice to mike Ah, don't worry about being nice to me. I've got thick skin. I'm, I've got thick skin. Bring it hard and direct. Don't sugarcoat it. Here's one other thing that since we're talking about changes, I remember in the, in the very beginning, one of the first things you said is, I'm not a hugger. Like Mike Simmons wanted me to know that from the very first time we started working together. And I feel like there was an episode within the last couple of months where you might have even told someone you would give them a hug. Yeah, but I think I probably set the stage where I said, and traditionally, I am not a hugger. So yeah, so I am still not a hugger, yet I have become more of a hugger over the course of the past 300 episodes. So maybe it was podcasting that made me more of a hugger. It could be. Now that there's 300 episodes behind you, what else do you want to do with the podcast? I think the uh, what I would like to see happen with the podcast and what I'm thinking about more within the podcast is how can we repurpose the content and not repurpose it just to cut it up and, and reshift it, but repurpose it so that it gets delivered in the right medium at the right time in the right space. And one of the things that I've started doing, and I stopped just because of a time and capacity thing, but I started doing some Instagram reels to at the point when we release content. So I would say, here are five key takeaways from a podcast episode or three takeaways from a discussion. I'd like to be able to reuse some of the audio from the podcast in those reels as a way to get the content out to a, a broader audience and draw more attention. So that's that's one thing. I really I want to start testing with better calls to action. So creating space in the middle of the episode for people to think through something that we're talking about or that I'm talking about with the guest, and then have them be able to put that work into practice. I don't know how well that will work or whether or not that is something that makes any sense whatsoever. But I want to continue to move along this arc of you can do all of the thinking and planning in the world, but if you don't take action, it doesn't really count. It doesn't really matter. You've got to go in and do the work. You've got to go in and test. You've got to go in and figure out how the work works for you. So how can we give more space for people to do the work and turn it into things that are impacting the way that they operate their business, the way that they operate their, I mean, their family, the way that they coach others? So impact, 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 and uh, still working on trying to figure out the best route, the appropriate route to do that. And that's where the feedback from the audience is going to be really helpful for me. You mentioned it earlier about the name change. Tell us more about what is behind that. Catalyst Sales, the name of the business, and it was the name of the podcast for a long time. Now it's Find My Catalyst. What's significant about that? Yeah. If I say the word sales or salesman, or salesman, or saleswoman, or sales professional, what's the first kind of image that comes to mind when you start talking about sales? Well, here's what I've learned though. I'll give you the answer that came to mind and what you're looking for. But I have learned being around Mike Simmons and other people who truly, truly love to sell because it's solving problems for people. There are people like Mike Simmons that will light up at the word sales. Beyond that, though, I think people get that used car salesman image when the word sales comes up. It kind of feels, kind of feels icky, kind of feels rough. It kind of feels like you know, the word that a lot of people use, someone's going to convince me or, oh, wait, this is gonna, something's going to happen. Like, How many times have you ever been on a call or have sent a note to somebody and said, hey, I'm not here to sell you something. This isn't a sales call. Or heard people say that out loud. This isn't a sales call. And I, I want to grab them by the lapel or the shirt or the shoulders and say, if you agree that sales is about helping people solve problems, then 
why is it a bad thing to call something that? So this is not a problem solving call. This is not a solution call. This is not something to help you call. So yeah, so it, that word I think started to detract a number of people where they said, okay, this is about sales. I'm not salesy. I'm not. I don't want to sell. I'm not going to be a salesperson. I don't need to go into this area. And I think it it artificially created a barrier to entry for the audience. So the shift, the mindset shift is, and this is genuine because I've said many times, even on this podcast and to others, what I want on my headstone is genuine. The word genuine. You, if you are genuinely interested in helping people solve problems. You can use the frameworks, tools, methods that we've talked about on this podcast, both with guests and that I've shared directly to help you do that stuff better. Account planning should be synonymous with problem solving or problem solving template. Territory planning should be synonymous with creating clarity and focus. Call planning should be synonymous with having effective meetings with others or effectively communicating. Even you know, when you put together an email, you should know who you're sending the email to, have a desired set of objectives that, you have, that you've determined, your objectives, anticipate what their objectives should be, receiving it, and have clarity around desired next steps. And if you do those things, you'll be a better communicator with others. So that's the background in changing the name. And then what that also started to do is open up the discussion to so many other people. I mean, we've had, we had Kurt Hines on here, who's a high school football coach. We've had Tim Schur on here, who is a, a you know, an operator inside, he was with a, a story brand with Donald Miller's group, and he's now he's got his own thing and his own book out there. So we've had some really amazing people on here who do some really really interesting things. Who because they are constantly giving back to their community, because they are working on helping others be better, they likely are doing some of the same things that those people who you would classify as sales professionals out in the marketplace do naturally because they're they're in a servant driven profession and if we demystify sales for people we will help people get better at communicating we will help people get better at problem solving we will get help people get better at decision making we will get help people get better at execution through clarity and focus after 6 years and 300 episodes what does the idea around catalyst mean to you? Has it changed since you started the show on what it means to be a catalyst? Not really. It has changed in that it's become kind of like a sculpture or a piece of art. You start to whittle away things and chip things away and clean up edges and start to smooth things out and refine things. So that's the, the change. It's been this iterative change process. For me, Catalyst has always been around there's someone inside uh, inside an organization or inside your community or inside your circle of influence who deeply cares about the problem you solve for. If you find them, they can be your catalyst. They'll be your catalyst. They'll introduce you to others. They will get you in front of the right people. They will bring you into the organization. They will be thinking about you out in the marketplace. They are the catalyst. You're not the catalyst. And that's where the find my catalyst perspective comes together, where by bringing some of these experts on, some of these people who are professionals in their own area of focus, they can be your catalyst so that you can take the next step and solve those problems that you're working through. So that's the evolution. And I look at it as less of a broader change and more of a refinement. What do you think, Jody? That's been the fun part of this for me is when we started the show, I don't think I thought about Catalyst too much other than it was the name of your your business, the name of the podcast. But it, over time, I've seen how it's turned into something different that a salesperson like Mike could be a catalyst to solving your problem. But now on to finding your catalyst, which could just be inspiration into doing what you want to do, which could be, well, it's led to the different guests Mike has talked about. So Mike, that's that's what's been neat for me that I don't think I had thought too far through on the, the idea of Catalyst when we started, but at least in my mind, it's evolved over the years and the episodes into something different as the show has, that it's become so much more 
than sales, not to downplay sales at all, but the show has become more of it. Rather than talking strictly about what a salesperson does, now we're talking about things that in, can apply to anyone, no matter what your role is. And I feel like Mike had tried to get that message out early on in some of the early episodes that, no, this is, you don't have to be a sales professional to get something out of this show. But now I think that's become a bigger piece of it, that it's it's not just for sales professionals. It's for people with problems, which is almost all of us. Yeah. People with problems or people who know people who have problems and want to help them or are looking for help on their own. So look, I have it at the beginning. We all have problems we are looking to solve. And we know that there are solutions out there, but we struggle with this. We struggle because of so many reasons. We get distracted. We have lack of clarity. We focus our attention on some of the wrong things. We get into our own head about stuff. We want to pass on this impression of we are absolutely amazing and we're, we want to be in, you know, Instagram perfect in social media. And then we struggle with asking the hard questions either of ourselves or of others that if we ask ourselves those things more often, we'd actually be able to break through those challenges faster. And I'll go to one of the you know, quotes that uh, has come up a couple of times in the, in the podcast before. It's the African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to find your, if you find yourself going really fast alone, you might find yourself spinning around in circles. And another theme that you'll hear me talk about and others talk about and really working to share, get this out in the marketplace is speed to impact is more important than going fast. Speed to impact is more important than going fast. And what that means is if we could find ourselves going around in circles really fast or chasing a ball like little kids playing soccer, or we could find ourselves in a situation where we've designed for next logical step, move the ball down the field and have that last pass be a pass into a goal. Two completely different approaches. One will look more professional. The other one will look a little bit scattered. So I think that ability to open yourself up to questions and ask others and search for a solution is pretty powerful. Well, fantastic. This has been a great look back on 300 episodes. I'll give you one more, Mike, before we go. I'll give you one more that I've noticed about you is you used to talk with more insider lingo as a salesperson. I, not necessarily acronyms or initialisms, but just things that a salesperson would know. And, okay. and I don't feel you do that as much anymore. And now... And the answer Mike just gave us was a great example of how he said something. And I thought to myself, well, what does that mean? And Mike said, and that means, and I feel you've gotten better at that too, Mike, that you'll say something and realize this needs a little more and then just give it. Definitely getting better at communication or communicating. And I still have a ways to go because sometimes I will bridge gaps and not necessarily bring everybody along through it. And this is where I'm personally working on getting better at storytelling and leveraging story. I'm getting better at taking writing more, not writing as much as I need to, but starting to write more, which is helping me with clarity of communication and clarity of information. So expect as we go forward to see more of that. Things should continue to become more clear. Things should be, there should be clarity around next logical steps and actions that you can take so that you can put the work into practice, do the work, not think about the work, do the work. And there will be more opportunities to engage directly with the podcast. So you know how to get a hold of me, Simmons underscore M on Twitter or direct message in LinkedIn. Those are great ways to get a hold of me. You can hit the live chat on the Catalyst Sale website. And I just want to thank everybody for being a part of this journey and for sharing it with others so that they can be a part of this journey. Well, Mike, since you started with the opening, I'll let you finish with the closing too. Well, Jody, thanks for joining me today. This has been an awesome conversation. Thanks for being a partner as we've gone through the development and multiple iterations of the podcast. If you know of anybody who would find value in this conversation, please share it with them. Let Jody and I know via LinkedIn, Twitter, 
We like seeing those shares. It helps us know that folks are engaging in the content. If you have feedback, send that feedback directly to me. If you have recommendations on guests, you can send those to hello at catalystsale.com. Hello at catalystsale.com. I'll include links in the show notes. Sales is a thinking process. Business is a thinking process. Life is a thinking process. How are you thinking differently about your process? Thank you.